Um, I am delighted to, to be here today and to share with you uh, Airbus's next step in quantum computing, uh, a step that is big in impact, big in ambition, uh, and I think will really help, as Yanni was saying, uh, propel the topic forward, uh, the Airbus Quantum Computing Challenge. Um, as I'll expose in a few moments and again tomorrow morning, uh, the challenge um, has been designed, it's a, a form of open tech challenge uh, to bring together the aerospace community and the quantum, community, uh, quantum computing community together uh, for improving and to try and, and mature the technology for real industrial applications. Good, before I go into the details of the challenge, I do want to take uh, a step back and just set the frame, uh, share with you some words about Airbus as a company, uh, and as well uh, show or expose to you uh, our background in, in uh, advanced computing and quantum computing and how we got to this point. So Airbus, uh, this is an Im image I like to use because it shows, it captures in one go a lot of what we do. Uh, many of you probably know us best for uh, the civil aircrafts, the planes that you see on the right-hand side of the image, uh, most of you probably have flown on an Airbus aircraft. Uh, today, our workhorse is the smaller one of the two aircrafts. It's part of the A320 family. Today, uh, every two seconds, there's one of those airplanes that lands or take off, takes off somewhere around the globe. That said, Airbus is more than just civil aircrafts, um, and this picture so shows you two other of those branches. On the left-hand side, you see some of our defense products that we offer. Uh, different aircrafts for, for the defense sector. And on the top of the image, you see helicopters. So we're also producing helicopters. What's not shown on the image uh, is some of our space segment. Uh, we've produced over 100 telecommunication satellites in geostationary orbit. We've delivered over 50 uh, Earth-observing satellites, and we've also had a number of deep space, deep space probes. So for this wide variety of products as part of our portfolio and some of the services that go with that, we're naturally, uh, I think, impacted and having to overcome some challenging computing uh, problems. Let me show you a few examples here, some very contemporary examples. Uh, autonomous flight, much like I think many of you are aware, the automotive industry is pushing for fully autonomous cars. That trend is also true in the aerospace sector where we're trying to provide uh, more autonomous systems all the way up to fully autonomous systems, uh, both for new segments, urban segments, uh, and also more traditional segments, such as uh, the fixed wing aircrafts over different legs, different uh, uh, duration of flights. Um, structural modeling intimately tied to flight physics. I'll talk about that a little bit in just a moment. At the bottom, data intelligence. How do we leverage our existing data and some additional capabilities we have in terms of data sensing and data recording to provide new services? And of course, that requires being able to process and utilize the data. And constellation management. How do we manage a fleet of aircrafts, a constellation of satellites, a distribution of parts? Problems that are not always unique to the aerospace sector, but just as with other industries, really trying to leverage that as much as possible. So in order to tackle these and other problems, um, we have had a long history of deploying high-performance computing solutions. Um, back in 2011, so only seven years ago, our computational capabilities actually ranked first among industries on the top 500 list. Uh, given our almost exponential growth in uh, computing needs, we've had to explore new and always better HPC solutions. Uh, like many industries, we've looked into cloud computing in order to tap to the best uh, computational systems out there wherever they may be located around the globe. Uh, and as well, we've looked at new hardware software interfaces, uh, things like GPUs, things like distributed parallel computing, and most recently, quantum computing. Indeed, for us, uh, quantum computers is not some exotic, isolated topic, but rather it's very closely related, very closely tied to the rest of our HPC portfolio. That also means that we can apply the same philosophy to quantum computers as we do to other types of computing platforms that we have to try and treat some of our more difficult problems. Um, two of them in particular. One, the metric. What actually matters? Performance. Uh, I mentioned that when I was on the panel this morning. For us, it's not the fact that quantum computers have these quantum properties that's nice. Uh, to, be, to be honest, we, we really don't care about that. Rather, what we want to see is how can that bring a, a demonstrated improvement over other methods in a certain time frame, and to be an, able to anticipate that and prepare ourselves for that eventuality. The second point is, as we do with other HPC systems, we want to work with the external ecosystem. 
Uh, we don't build computers. It's not, it's not what we do. It's not where our expertise is. We are truly experts in the aerospace sector, the platforms, the services that go with that. So we want to combine ourselves with the external ecosystem and try and leverage that as best as possible for our, for our needs. Um, Airbus started on quantum computing already a few years ago. I think arguably one of our first steps was through our ventures arm, Airbus Ventures, uh, having a seed investment in QCWare that then allowed us to sort of take more steps and have a, a window into that space. Uh, since then, we've had four projects, one of which was last year. Some of you might have heard my presentation on fault tree analyses. Uh, we've had three more this year. And, and following these uh, first projects, I think we, we became quite keen, quite interested to further accelerate the topic. And that's why today Airbus is announcing this, this challenge, uh, a challenge that has flight physics problems to really try and advance quantum computing for industrial applications. We're, we're calling out to uh, all experts in the field to really try and kickstart a quantum era in the aerospace sector. Um, the challenge was designed with the quantum computing community in mind, again, to try and foster that connection between ourselves as aerospace expert and the community. Good, so there are a few questions. Uh, why flight physics? Why now? Uh, so first, to flight physics. Uh, broadly speaking, flight physics is all of the science and engineering uh, that is related to the flight of aircrafts. It's Obviously a very broad topic. It's also one that's deeply impactful. It, it covers everything from the design of aircrafts all the way to their uh, operations. Um, it'll govern the quality of the movement of an aircraft through the air down to the revenue streams of airlines. So for such a broadly impactful topic in our sector, in the aerospace sector, it felt natural to choose it uh, as a starting point for what is, and I think upcoming, a really big radical change in the computing world. And the why now? Well, I think if we take a look at the overall evolution of, of computing in general, and especially recently, the fact that so many of you are here, uh, we believe we're on the cusp of a big change. And Airbus does not simply want to be on the sidelines of this change. Rather, we really want to be a, cat a catalyst, an accelerator, a driver, someone who's helping to push it. And that's why we felt it important to uh, have this challenge. Now, we are realistic. Quantum computing today is still at an early stage. We talked about it this morning. NIST computers have noise and have some imperfections. Uh, and in order to get those computers to be able to apply and, and answer some real industrial uh, problems will require lots more work and lots more effort. But we're convinced that the fastest way to get there is by combining ourselves with our expertise, specific to aerospace, with the ecosystem, bringing those two communities together, working together, drawing ties in order to foster that, um, that development. So what are some of the um, elements to, uh, to the challenge? The challenge will start in early 2019. It'll run through most of the year with a submission in the fourth quarter of next year. Um, throughout the year, we will keep in touch, keep the contact with uh, the quantum computing community, uh, answer questions, try and cr clarify the uh, five problem statements that underpin the challenge as much as possible. Um, during the year, we expect either individuals or teams uh, to develop algorithms, to develop methodologies, methods, some hybrid classical quantum, some fully quantum to try and answer these problems. Uh, and by the end of it, again, be able to um, evaluate that. Um, we will do an evaluation at the end of the year, um, and then winners will be announced either very late in 2019 or early 2020. And for the winners, uh, we uh, plan two things. One is access to hardware. So Airbus will make sure to provide hardware uh, capabilities for those winners. And two, to work with us, to work collaboratively. So really bring our own experts, our own teams together with uh, those either, again, individuals or teams to work together and further the problems and carry the topic forward. The problem is based on, as I said, five problem statements. Um, the five statements came together in the form of a sprint, a very short duration, very intense uh, period. It was members of the flight physics community at Airbus, uh, the Airbus's central technology office, my team, Airbus Blue Sky, along with our QCWare partners coming together, brainstorming about known difficult challenges in flight physics, uh, and ultimately coming out with uh, five topics that we felt were most interesting. 
uh, aircraft optimization, CFD, computational fluid dynamics, uh, neural networks for PDEs, especially as they apply to the aerospace sector, the wing box design, which is a multi-domain optimization problem, and finally, aircraft loading optimization. Now, I won't go through the details of each of these problem statements today. I have a rather limited time. Uh, but that said, I strongly encourage you to come back tomorrow morning, 9.45 AM. Uh, I'll go into each of these topics one by one, give you more details about them, uh, and also allow you, give you opportunity to ask questions about uh, the challenge. So having said all this, I hope that I've uh, motivated you about this challenge. I hope I've encouraged you to find out more, uh, and perhaps for some of you to even join and uh, put yourself and apply yourself for the challenge. Uh, you can find out more now by going to the website. You can also use the QR code. It'll link you directly to the website. Uh, and if I had one request for each of you, would be to please help circulate the word. We really want to be able to uh, share this, this uh, challenge with as many people within the quantum computing community as possible. So with each of you sort of spreading the word, I think this will be very helpful. Uh, the hashtag QC challenge, uh, hopefully we'll, we'll try and reach uh, everyone. So thank you very much, and uh, more, more info tomorrow morning. Thanks.